District Attorney Fannie Willis has accused rapper Jeffrey Williams, who goes by the name Young Thug, of co-founding a violent street gang named Young Slime Life. The YSL RICO trial is set to be the longest and most extensive trial in the history of Fulton County. The case has experienced drama and shocking revelations that have elicited varying reactions from the public. While Young Thug's fans believe he is innocent, recent developments in the case have shown that the rapper may be headed for a lengthy prison sentence. From his allies cutting deals with cops to lawyers getting arrested, here's what's going on in the case. Drama in the YSL case. During opening statements Monday, prosecutors said Young Thug used his music to promote the gang's drug and gun-related activities. Young Thug denies any wrongdoing, but several of his co-defendants have already pleaded guilty ahead of this trial. The YSL Rico has been nothing short of eventful both in and out of court. At the moment, the famous hip-hop rapper seems like a lonely figure with most of those arrested with him taking plea deals. But while that may not be shocking since there is no honor among thieves, the latest and craziest news coming out of the case must be a defense attorney getting entangled in the case. Criminal defense attorney is on the other side of the law tonight. Atlanta police say she told a murder suspect to throw away evidence. In a stunning development, the YSL Rico trial took yet another unexpected turn. As defense attorney Nicole Feagan, who represented defendant Tenquarius Mender, was arrested on gang-related charges. On February 16th, Feagan was apprehended by Atlanta police following allegations that she had made contact with a suspect involved in a fatal shooting that occurred in December 2022. The charges against Feagan include participating in criminal street gang activity and criminal solicitation to commit the offense of tampering with evidence. This arrest adds another layer of intrigue to the already sensational YSL RICO trial. Nicole Fagan, a prominent defense attorney, found herself at the center of this high-stakes trial as she took on the role of representing Tanquarius Mender, one of the defendants. Mender, along with his co-defendants, faced serious charges that could potentially result in lengthy prison sentences if convicted. The charges against Fagan are not directly related to the YSL RICO trial. Instead, they stem from an unrelated deadly shooting that took place on the corner of Williams and Baker Streets in Atlanta back in December 2022. The details of this incident are chilling and have left many questions questioning Fagan's involvement. The charges against Fagan include participating in criminal street gang activity and criminal solicitation to commit the offense of tampering with evidence. The prosecution alleges that Fagan played a role in the deadly shooting by instructing one of the shooters to dispose of the murder weapon. This alleged act of tampering with evidence raises serious concerns about the integrity of the legal process. Furthermore, Fagan is accused of contacting another defendant about an active warrant for his arrest. This alleged communication suggests a level of involvement and coordination that is deeply troubling. The prosecution is building a case against Fagan, presenting evidence that paints a disturbing picture of her alleged actions. As the news of Fagan's arrest spread, the legal community and the public has been left in disbelief. How could a defense attorney, entrusted with upholding justice and protecting the rights of their clients, be involved in such serious criminal activity? The allegations against Fagan have shattered the trust placed in her as a legal professional. Fagan's arrest has raised questions about her previous actions in the YSL RICO trial. Did her alleged involvement in criminal activities impact her representation of Tenquarius Mender? These questions have cast a cloud of uncertainty over the trial and have left many wondering if justice can truly be served. But Fagan's story goes much deeper than this. As the legal proceedings unfold, the public's attention has turned to Fagan's social media presence. Fans of the YSL Collective began scouring her Instagram account, where they found posts that raise eyebrows and call into question her professionalism. Memes, questionable captions, and images depicting a lifestyle that seems incongruous with her role as a defense attorney have only added fuel to the fire. Amongst the questionable posts include a meme featuring Fagan, where she's bending down and squinting, with the caption, When opposing counsel whips out video surveillance of your client and you try to act like you can't tell who it is, another post featured Fagan sitting on the floor, with racks of dollar bills arranged to spell the word broke, and yet another post featured Fagan holding a gun, wearing a spaghetti strap black dress with the caption, If your man's name holds weight, you can't just be out here acting like a regular bit. This is not the first time during the trial that attorneys have been arrested. One lawyer found himself in handcuffs after drugs were found on him in the courtroom. A defense attorney with the YSL RICO case has been arrested. Officials say attorney Astacios Manetas was arrested this morning in the Fulton County courtroom. The chaos unfolded on a Thursday morning, April 20th, 2023. As Anastasios Manetas, the attorney representing YSL defendant Miles Farley, arrived at the courthouse. As the day began, Manetas had no 
idea that he would soon find himself at the center of a shocking turn of events. According to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, as part of the routine security measures, officers conducted a search of Manetta's bag around 10 a.m. Little did they know that this search would uncover something that would lead to his arrest. To their astonishment, officers discovered a bottle of prescription medication in Manetta's bag. This discovery immediately raised suspicions and prompted them to take swift action. Without hesitation, they arrested the attorney on the spot. The courtroom, which had been buzzing with anticipation, was now filled with a sense of disbelief. But the story doesn't end there. As officers moved in to apprehend Manettas, he allegedly attempted to get rid of his phone by tossing it to another attorney. However, his aim was off and the phone ended up hitting an officer instead. This unexpected turn of events only added fuel to the fire, intensifying the already chaotic atmosphere in the courtroom. As a result of his actions, Manettas now faced a series of charges. He was charged with simple battery on a law enforcement officer, possession of pills not in their original container, obstruction, and disrupting court proceedings. The severity of these charges sent shockwaves through the legal community and left everyone wondering how a situation could escalate so quickly. A photo shared on Twitter captured the moment when Manetta's found himself in handcuffs inside the courthouse. It was a sight that no one expected to witness, especially in the midst of such a high-profile trial. The image quickly spread across social media, further fueling the frenzy surrounding the arrest. This arrest sent shockwaves not only through the courtroom, but also through the entire YSL camp. Young Thug who was present in court at the time, could be seen in video footage looking confused as the situation unfolded. The tension in the room was palpable as officers tried to restore order, urging everyone to remain calm and clear the courtroom. Just a day before this drama, YSL defendant Rodalius Ryan, also known as Lil Rod, made his presence known in the most disruptive way possible. As the proceedings were underway on that fateful Wednesday, April 19th, tension filled the air. Suddenly, from behind the chamber doors, Ryan began screaming at the top of his lungs. The outburst sent shockwaves through the courtroom, leaving everyone in a state of confusion and disbelief. But the disturbance didn't end there. Ryan was taken to a holding cell, where his screams continued to echo through the halls of justice. Young Thug, who was in court at the time, could be seen in video footage looking bewildered as the situation escalated. The courtroom, once a place of order and decorum, had turned into a scene of chaos. Officers and court officials scrambled to restore order, urging everyone to remain calm and clear the courtroom. Amidst the commotion, other YSL defendants, Christian Eppinger and Caradrius Dorsey rose to their feet demanding that Ryan be released from the holding cell. Their voices filled with urgency and conviction, they proclaimed his innocence, insisting that he had done nothing wrong. They too were handcuffed and escorted out of the courtroom. The chaotic scene adds to the drama that has been a common occurrence throughout the case. Another defense attorney in the case, Suri Chada Jimenez, was held in contempt after he showed up to a court hearing late. He was ultimately able to avoid jail time by being ordered to purchase lunch for the other lawyers in the case. He said he would likely get sandwiches from a nearby shop, but he was able to get wings from the iconic Atlanta strip club Magic City instead. With attorneys getting in trouble as the case unfolds, one can only wonder what will happen to their clients. But as if all this is not already worrying for Young Thug, an anonymous call to the police that was played in court identifies Young Thug as the shooter in a shooting that took place a decade ago. Prosecutors presented a recording of a 911 call made on September 11, 2013, where an unidentified woman implicates Young Thug as the shooter of a mutual friend. On that day, an unidentified woman made a call to 911, providing crucial information about a shooting incident involving the rapper. The call, played during the trial, reveals the woman's initial shock and confusion upon learning that Young Thug was allegedly involved in the incident. They came to my house and told me that the guy who shot somebody's name was Young Thug, whoever that's supposed to be. In the recording, the woman makes it clear that she is relaying information from another source, emphasizing that she wanted to ensure the details were on record with the police. She expresses uncertainty about Young Thug's identity and the gravity of the situation. It's important to note that the woman also mentions that the injured friend was not in immediate danger suggesting that the incident may have occurred prior to the call. This raises questions about the timeline of events and the circumstances surrounding the shooting. The revelation of Young Thug's alleged involvement as the gunman has sent shockwaves through the music industry. As the trial enters its second month, the prosecution continues to present evidence and build their case against Young Thug and the other defendants. The 911 call serves as a crucial piece of evidence, shedding light on the alleged involvement of Young Thug in the shooting incident and YSL being a criminal enterprise. 
described. The courtroom and the rap industry is buzzing with speculation and anticipation as the trial unfolds. Will Young Thug be able to beat these allegations? What other shocking revelations await us in the coming days? One thing that is concerning is the number of people who have testified in this case, from his close associates to his own brother. All these plea deals continue to hurt Thug's chances of beating the allegations. The YSL Rico snitches. As the criminal case against Atlanta rapper and alleged gang leader Young Thug continues, nearly two dozen other defendants now are heading toward a trial. A handful of people have now taken plea deals. The latest came this afternoon when Young Thug's own brother pleaded guilty. A photo of the rapper during a court session surfaced online where Thugga can be seen hunched over his desk with a mask dangling below his nose as he rests his head on the table. According to many, he seemed defeated. So what evidence is there against the YSL boss that has people's minds made up regarding his guilt? Well, snitching has been on top of the list. The whole case has been plagued with snitching allegations and a leaked three-hour interrogation video of a YSL affiliate further fueled the rumors that people were raiding out Young Thug. One of the most publicized confessions was by Young Thug's brother. Unfunk, whose real name is Quantavius Greer, took a plea deal, adding another twist to this already sensational story. According to local reports, Unfunk entered a negotiated guilty plea on one count of violating Georgia's RICO Act and a count of theft by reception of stolen property. The plea agreement resulted in a 12-year sentence, with two years being commuted to time served and the remaining 10 years on probation. As part of the agreement, Unfunk was also required to complete 750 hours hours of community service, adhere to a curfew, and refrain from contacting his brother and others involved in the original indictment. Unfunk took to Instagram stories to address the rumors circulating about his plea deal. He expressed his frustration, stating, damn, people really think I told on my own brother, shaking my head. Show me in my paperwork I told on anybody. He made it clear that he had no interest in entertaining such talk and ended his update with peace and blessing. Unfunk's lawyer, Nicole Mormon, shed some light on the situation. She explained that the 10-year probation period could potentially be terminated after three years. Mormon emphasized that Unfunk had not cooperated with authorities or agreed to testify against any of his co-defendants in the trial. Mr. Greer has accepted a plea offer of essentially 10 years of probation, which is eligible for termination after three years. Mr. Greer has not cooperated and has not agreed to testify against any of his co-defendants in the trial, his lawyer told the press. However, not long after Unfunk was back in court for violating his plea agreement, Unfunk was brought in on charges of possessing a firearm as a convicted felon, persons associated with a criminal street gang to participate in illegal activity, and a few other traffic offenses. All eyes were on Judge Ural Glanville as he prepared to deliver the sentencing that would determine Unfunk's fate. The judge addressed Unfunk directly, reminding him of the special condition of his probation that explicitly prohibited him from possessing a firearm. The issue I find aggravating in this particular circumstance is that you got arrested with a gun within six months of you being placed on probation, the judge stated, full of disappointment. In a devastating blow to the embattled artist, Judge Glanville sentenced Unfunk to nearly a decade in jail. The severity of the sentence reflected the judge's belief that Unfunk was not a suitable candidate for probation due to his recent actions. Thug's brother is not the only one who cooperated with the cops. Gunna, also a close associate of the rapper, also made a deal and was freed. The deal that set Gunna free, a major development in a huge racketeering case the Atlanta-born rapper Gunna, whose given name is Sergio Kitchens, made a deal with prosecutors and walked out of the Fulton County Jail late this afternoon. Now, Gunna will not have to stand trial early next year with rapper Young Thug. Gunna and Young Thug were close friends even before music, so for Gunna to turn on him, it may mean that Thugga is without a doubt in trouble. It was never like on no music shit at first. We were just like friends, you know what I'm saying? Homeboys in the street. And then it just grew over time of me just doing my music. And then he just kind of like had a look in on it and just helped. Gunna had been charged with one count of racketeering. According to the indictment, he allegedly received stolen property and was in possession of drugs, including methamphetamine, marijuana, and hydrocodone, with the intent to distribute. Of course, Gunna denied the charges. However, he was denied bail twice, which may have finally broken the horse's back. He agreed to take a deal that would see him go free. But this is not the whole story. Turns out, Gunna's plea saw him initially sentenced to five years with one year served. However, a judge commuted the one-year sentence to time served and suspended the four-year remaining balance subject to conditions, including 500 hours of community service. Overall, the deal meant that Gunna would be a free man. But had he really given the prosecutors something that would put the YSL boss behind bars? Well, a video emerged showing Gunna in court dropping a few words of truth before a judge. Please 
Yes, ma'am. Gunna admitted that YSL was not only a music label, but a gang. He further admitted to witnessing some YSL members participate in criminal activity as a gang. YSL is a music label and a gang. And you have personal knowledge that members or associates of YSL have committed crimes in furtherance of the gang. Yes, ma'am. When this video was leaked, the industry was ablaze with people calling Gunna a rat. Gunna went on the defense immediately. His lawyers even took to Instagram to deny the rumors that Gunna had snitched. Gunna did not snitch to get out of jail, the post read. He has said nothing and is not cooperating. His plea statement cannot be used in court against any other defendant. It turns out that the rapper had taken an offered plea. This means that he did not admit guilt, but instead admitted that there was enough evidence to convict him. As part of his offered plea, Gunna's statements would only apply to his case and could not be used in subsequent cases. Well, according to the rapper, he was not going to be a state witness, nor was he planning on getting involved in the trial any further. I want to make it perfectly clear that I have not made any statements, have not been interviewed, have not cooperated, have not agreed to testify or be a witness for or against any party in the case, and have absolutely no intention of being involved in the trial process in any way. The rapper's statement read, the rapper claimed that when he joined the label, he did not see it as a gang. When I became affiliated with YSL in 2016, I did not consider it a gang. More like a group of people from Metro Atlanta who had common interests and artistic aspirations, Gunna said. According to the rapper, his focus at the label had always been making music. My focus of YSL was entertainment. Although Gunna has come forward and explained his actions, possibly even speaking on behalf of other YSL members who had taken similar deals, the consequences of their decisions have had a negative impact on Young Thug's chances of ever tasting freedom again. Young Thug's attorney has since revealed YSL members taking plea deals has been the single most challenging option obstacle against his client's case. According to Thug's lawyer, the authorities had turned his client into an easy target. He's, he's like the easy target? This is because YSL members who were part of the indictment understood that they would get a deal and an easy way out of the case if they snitched on their boss. On the other hand, the lawyer revealed that the authorities were eager to cut deals with anyone who was willing to reveal any information that would incriminate young Thug and put him behind bars. So if somebody gets arrested and gets in trouble, and they want a deal, law enforcement officers are all too eager to say, well, tell us about Mr. Williams. Is he involved in this? What do you know about him? He may not be wrong as another confession was caught on camera, this time Lil Woody trying to distance himself from Young Thug. So you're talking about Jeffrey. In the 18 months since the YSL indictment was first handed down, many of the original 28 defendants have either accepted plea deals or been separated from the case for procedural reasons, leaving only six defendants to face trial this week. It seems like the authorities are using the age-old tactic of divide and conquer, leaving Thug a lonely figure and painting him as the guilty mastermind of the gang. I'm not really in a bad position. Can't see this Thug, this me. This is my mama. Whatever he do, I'm automatically just attached to him. Because people think I'm just stupid. I don't like being around this nigga. You know every time he don't call me up, come up there. A visibly tense Lil Woody, whose left leg could not hold still, was visibly terrified as he snitched on the YSL boss. It's as if he knew Thug's goose was cooked, and he didn't want to go down with him. What better way to save himself than to give the cops what they wanted? In the video, Lil Woody tries to negotiate for his freedom by giving up vital information. He asks the detectives for assurances that the information he gives up will help his own legal woes. The detectives tell him they can't offer him anything, but can let the district attorney's office know that he's cooperating. How can I help myself? That's all I'm asking. I said, we can't on where I'm Woody, I can't make it any clearer. So that's no, saying. it's not pointless. Um, like I said, we'll, 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 we'll communicate. What I'm saying is, I can't offer you anything. Investigator Flores can't offer you anything. We can let the district attorney's office know and down there that. You were cooperative. A convicted felon and documented gang member who served time in federal prison in 2018, YSL Woody was arrested on October 27, 2021, after being caught driving his girlfriend's car with a loaded gun inside. He assured the detectives that the information he had would help him in his current situation. He then blew the whistle on an alleged murder plot that was supposed to take place that night. Something will happen today. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Somebody's supposed to get killed tonight. This is a murder that's about to take place with some very high people and Woody was ready to give up a whole lot more to save his skin. He was going to tell the cops, those who were involved, and when they were going to carry out their hit. I tell y'all this much right here. I know the people are going to go do it. I, I, I can get the time when they're going to go do it. So y'all can kiss me in the head. 
Woody must have been afraid to mention Thug's name directly. However, he nodded when asked whether Thug was the one who had ordered the planned hit. The person you all just think that I did tell him anything. He wants him. He wants him as bad. So you're talking about Jeffrey? The drama involving Lil Woody and YSL continued as even police officers became involved in the plot to tamper with the case. Lil Woody's girlfriend, who was a police officer at the time, was later arrested herself and charged with multiple felonies for allegedly abusing her badge to protect her boyfriend. Apparently, she tried to delete Woody's Instagram page containing photos of gang activity, as well as attempting to disable his phone, which police were storing as evidence. More and more drama continues to take center stage in this trial, and only time will tell whether Thug will spend time behind bars. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.